It's something that you may have brought in from your previous employer, your previous relationship, your previous family dynamic, et cetera. And so you really have to realize that all conflict starts internally initially, and it starts at the identity piece. You are listening to the Redefining Wealth podcast with Patrice Washington. In today's episode, we sit down with transformational speaker and fellow podcaster Patrice Grimes. She says it's time to unleash the peace. Now, before I jump in to today's episode, I have to tell you that this one was brought to you by me. (laughs) Actually, it's brought to you by Purpose to Platform. We are now enrolling. So if you're starting to think about what's next for you when you leave your possibly high paying, but maybe unfulfilling job and have no clue of where to start to build a strong foundation, My business accelerator and mentorship program, Purpose to Platform, may be just what you need. This 20-week online adventure will get you clear on how to package your purpose, communicate your promise to your ideal audience, choose the best platform for your personality and lifestyle, and create a premium offer. You'll have accountability and support in a dynamic community so you can finally make progress and be ready before you even need to pull that trigger on what may no longer be serving you. And let's see if we're a fit. Purpose2platform.com. That's purpose, the number two, platform.com. In this week's episode, I am so excited to introduce you to another P2P sister. She is a graduate of my Purpose to Platform program. And I couldn't be more proud of this young lady. I heard her speak and I knew that she needed to be on the podcast. She really talks a lot about conflict resolution, but wait until you hear this connection between peace, identity, conflict. It's so brilliant. And I'm so incredibly proud of her. Patrice Grimes is a seasoned award-winning HR professional who utilized her relationship building, coaching, and leadership skill set in the corporate world to transition into a broader holistic approach that starts outside of the workplace. Today, Patrice is known as the Peace Curator. She's a transformational speaker, and she's the founder and CEO of the Oasis Space, where she coaches and serves as a place of refuge for high-achieving, go-getter mentality women, and she helps them to identify healthy conflict resolution strategies. Patrice believes one of the major keys of conflict resolution is to ditch performance-based complexes in exchange for embodying peace. Without further ado, here's Patrice Grimes. Welcome to the Redefining Wealth podcast, Patrice. Thank you, Patrice. I appreciate it. <laughs> Excited to be here. It's going to be a lot of Patrice's and Patrice's. I, I know, right? <laughs> going on. Like, I talk to myself, but I mean, it's different, like having another beautiful reflection talking back to me, you know? Okay, come on. <laughs> come on, beautiful reflections. Listen, I am so excited. So I have to give this disclaimer. I met Patrice Grimes when she enrolled in Purpose to Platform and then came on over to command the stage. And even though I got to watch her I'm, I'm acting like I'm not talking to you, even though I got to watch you like blossom. And I know there was a lot going on for you in P2P, but I watched you stretch. Mm-hmm. I think I even had to push you and shake you a little bit virtually. You did. Yep. Well, once or twice, <laughs> once or twice. I feel like I had to push and shake you a little bit. Um, and then we got to command the stage and I heard you tell your story. Mm-hmm. And I heard you make this connection between identity and conflict that I personally had never heard before. Mm -hmm. And I instantly was like, we got to talk about that on the podcast. We have got to talk about this. So I'm not going to give it away. Let me just start with, tell us your story. Just tell us your story. Why are you the peace curator? Yeah. Well, Patrice, you know, um, Honestly, it starts with, I mean, right now I have a day-to-day job. I'm one of those people where I have my business, but I still work in the corporate world, right? And so I have 
this professional background where I have over, you know, 12 years of HR experience, right? And so I've been able to see where this conflict, as you mentioned, it shows up in the workplace over about like 85% of people in the workplace experience this conflict, but only 60% have shown that they have not even received any basic training to handle conflict, right? And so when I have worked with these managers, employees to identify these conflict resolution strategies, it's something that I was able to quickly identify that this conflict was not starting and ending in the workplace. It's something that was actually being initiated outside of the workplace, right? It's, it's really was something that was rooted in their identity, or even worse, what I've called and identified as an identity crisis. And so as I kind of just went within my tenure, within my, my employment, I kind of just started to explore that a little more and, and kind of pull back the pieces. But it wasn't something that was easy for me to identify initially, as you mentioned, right? Like as the piece creator, this is not something that I was just birth with immediately, I had to definitely identify it for myself. Um, and, and there was certainly some time where I didn't know how to identify conflict for myself. I was a person um, that probably was exactly how my manager's employees showed up, right? This was back in October 2017. It was literally like a week after celebrating my birthday. I probably should have been on this high horse at the time, but there was total chaos in my life, Patrice, utter chaos that I really wasn't showing to my family. I wasn't showing it to my friends. And what I thought was chaos even became more chaotic. The person that I was dating at the time, I came outside to see him on the phone with another woman. And my entire world as I knew it at that point had fallen apart. I immediately, you know, resulted to anger. And then it was avoidance, which I think is those natural human reactions for people. It's, it's typically conflict aggression or, top, or, or, or conflict avoidance is what we typically see with conflict, right? And then I, I recall myself then just kind of pleading with him, right? Like I wanted any type of answer he could provide that was going to bring me some type of peace, so to speak, is what I what I would consider to be peace, just to help me sleep that night, to make things go back to normal, whatever it was that was just going to make me feel like, let's just, let's just have things go back to what they were. But it was not that easy. Uh, It certainly, our relationship ended. And I think it was about a week before I could even regain some type of appetite to eat again. And so I remember like just driving and and trying to find where I was going to have dinner one night. And I'd come to a stoplight. I didn't know what I was going to eat because for the last several years, I really had not made any decisions for myself, right? Like I had completely lost myself in that relationship, you know, to the point where I wasn't choosing what I wanted to eat, had invested myself a lot into the things that he wanted to do, like his dreams and passions, and and kind of set my own stuff down. And so I really had to identify like, what was going on? Like, it's a lot when you realize, like, I don't even know what I like to eat, the food that I like to eat anymore, right? So I remember like having this moment where I was just crying out to God at this parking lot, like, why me? Like, why am I going through this? Like, I'm, I'm so tired of this feeling. I'm tired of the rejection. I'm tired of this lost feeling. I'm tired of feeling like I got it all together all the time and I don't. I'm tired of hiding behind this mask um, to my family and my friends and, and feeling like I got it all together. When really this turmoil is happening around me. And I remember when I came to a point of just realizing I could decide what I wanted to eat and I had this option and I had this choice. I remember like screaming out to God, like saying like, thank you, God, I'm finally free. But that was my idea of free at that moment of being able to select food or having the money to choose food. But you know, realizing now, like that obviously was not even freedom at that moment. Right. And, and God checked me then, like, (laughs) he's kind of like, uh, uh, Patrice, pump your brakes. That's real cute and all, but you're not exactly free yet. But if you trust me, you will be right. And so I remember like, just, you know, God took me through this journey to really identify peace for myself. And I remember he brought me to this scripture Matthew 5 and 9 in the Message Bible. And I have read that scripture so many times with the Beatitudes, which is anyone that is familiar with the Bible has seen the blessed be the peacemakers and all of those things. 
but I had never seen it in the message Bible where it says you are blessed when you can show people how to uh, cooperate instead of fight. And that's when you discover who you are in God's family and your place in this world. And like for me, that was a game changer, right? Like it was when I really identified that peace in itself was rooted in identity. And for me, it was like my identity specifically was rooted in helping others identify peace for themselves and identify those healthy conflict resolution strategies, right? So it was a big deal for me. It was a game changer for me because I realized up until that point, right? Like I had been really going through life, even before this relationship, going through this identity crisis, you Mm -hmm. know, from the age of 13, I was a, became a preacher's kid, Patrice, and I'll usually say PK and people won't always affectionately know what I mean by, (laughs) but it's a preacher's kid. That's a pivotal moment in in a kid's life. Like you're really trying to figure out yourself. I'm like just about to go into high school, all of that. But I have really learned during that time to make my issues more insignificant than others during that time. Mm. I had taught myself to do what others needed me to do, show up how I needed to show up. I had learned to perform my way into the hearts of others so that they would not discard me or be disappointed in me. And so that was something that I realized I had taught myself so much and had become so ingrained in my life that that's why I had developed this identity crisis that showed up as conflict to the point where I couldn't advocate for myself in jobs. I couldn't advocate for myself in in my relationships. I couldn't advocate for myself when it came to friends in multiple areas, right? And I think a lot of people will, like, they'll hear it and just think like, well, you know, how is that conflict or how is that a big deal? Because it affects your finances. It affects your relationships. It affects multiple things, right? It impacts everything. It, it, impacts it literally everything. impacts everything. Okay, you've said so much. I just <laughs> I, like there are so many things here that I don't want to just gloss over. And mm-hmm. I see myself and you in that, you know, as you learn a lesson to you, it just becomes so clear, right? Mm-hmm. I could imagine someone listening to this and they're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I hear myself in her story, I hear what I've been doing. I hear making my issues less significant than others or performing my way into the hearts of others. Mm -hmm. And we don't even think about conflict as being like an internal conflict. We always think of like, oh, I got into it with someone else. But what you're saying is before you get into it with other people, there's conflict going on with you and how you see yourself, how you perceive your place in the world. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Every conflict typically is going to start with you. So yeah, you're going to, you may have a, a conflict with your partner. You, Yeah. Those conflicts exist, but you have to then kind of look internally to say, well, why am I having this conflict? Why is this argument coming up? Right. Because typically it always comes back to the internal. It's your internal perspective. It's your internal perception. It's something that you may have brought in from your previous employer, your previous relationship, your previous family dynamic, et cetera. And so you really have to realize that all conflict starts internally initially, and it starts at the identity piece. Ooh, okay. So you mentioned two terms that really stood out to me, and it was conflict avoidance and conflict aggression. Mm -hmm. So I could see, and I don't know, I know about, I know you said it for you. I know a lot of ladies probably listening have experienced this. I definitely have done the conflict avoidance. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The like, you know what? I'm going to suck it up. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to make it worse. Let me just leave it alone. And felt like that was creating peace mm-hmm. because right. it was avoiding having an argument, a fight, a whatever. When you think about it, the turmoil that was inside, it was like by avoiding conflict with you, I'm creating massive conflict within me. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the thing, Patrice, that is the thing. So what I teach my clients is that there are times when 
avoidance is necessary or where you're you're not going to argue or challenge someone for the sake of your own peace because you'll realize that identifying where some people are not in a position to even communicate that they're, they're not going to be receptive to understand your perspective you have to just come to terms with okay this is the situation and I, and I have to accept the situation for what it is right and so that will show up as in some ways avoidance per se when you're talking about that there is still turmoil that you're experiencing internally then there's really not peace there right and so for me how I've identified when there's real conflict that's showing up is when there is a disagreement or there's a misalignment between the mind and the heart, that's when you know there's conflict, right? So if we can get the two to align together. So when, when we think about the heart, right, that's our emotions. That's how we're feeling. Our mind is our logic, the, the way we think and process things. When those two things are, are misaligned or in disagreement with one another, that's typically how we can recognize conflict showing up. But if they're in alignment with each other, that's when you're really going to experience the peace. That's when you're yes. going to peace, right? So um, like you say, I may avoid something, but so in your mind, you're like, okay, let me just avoid this because I don't want to keep going back and forth with this. I don't want to have this challenge. I don't want to have this argument. But in your heart of heart, you're in your feelings because you're like, I'm like not feeling, you know, I don't know why this person keeps doing this. Are they trying me? Are they testing me? Are they doing this? Do they not respect me? Or I know for me, why I would avoid and, and, and a lot of women that I speak to that will say why they've avoided is I'm just not going to say anything. But deep down is I don't want to say anything because I'm afraid this person's going to leave. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid this person is going to reject me. I'm afraid yes. this person is going to be angry with me. And it's this fear. This is an intense fear that I can't really show up how I need to show up for myself. I can't really show up as my authentic self because if I do, people aren't really going to be accepting of who I really am. And if I tell them that I'm not okay with how they treat me or I'm not okay with how they speak to me or I'm not okay with them wasting my time or whatever it is, then this person's going to walk away and I'm not really okay with them walking away right now. But you have to be okay with some people walking away when they don't serve you any well for your life. Baby. Yes. I did a um, episode called Stop Romanticizing Expired Relationships. Mm. And I realized for myself, in this particular instance, it was a work relationship. But I had, to your point, I had gone through conflict avoidance. I mm -hmm. knew the person was not a fit for us anymore. I knew that they didn't have the same character or just the same values in terms of business that I wanted to have. And I didn't want to rock the boat. I yeah. was like, oh, I have too much going on to just be letting people go. <laughs> like, I was <laughs> like, no, like mm, not right now. I can help them be better. And the thing I say in that episode is like, never think that you're above other people's bad behavior. Mm. So here I am avoiding conflict, but really I don't have peace. I'm not sleeping that night. And I think I'm avoiding conflict, but I was just creating more and more internal conflict because I didn't want them to walk away and mm -hmm. leave me hanging. I felt yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'd rather deal with what I know than right. end up. But as I told another client this not too long ago. I was like, you know what? We have to learn that sometimes it's better to have nobody than a bad body. That keeping people is. just for the sake of keeping people in your space, it's going to backfire every time. Yeah, because it's like you learn, Patrice, that it's like you are putting energy into people and places and it's draining you of that energy of where you could really be applying it to more reciprocal relationships. The people that are actually going to pour back into you and you're taking away from that relationship, those areas, because you're putting more energy in the ones that's draining you. And so, like you say, nobody is sometimes better than a bad body, for sure, 100%. I'm glad you even recognize that with your employee, because like you say, it shows up in a lot of different areas. It's not just romantic area relationships. It's not in just these work relationships. They show up in multiple areas, for sure. Yeah. Talk to me about conflict aggression. So I was clear on conflict avoidance, but what does conflict aggression look like? you immediately zero to a hundred, right? It's really, you are belligerently angry and it sometimes shows up violently. It shows up as accusatory. 
It shows up as all the things that are just unhealthy ways to to handle it and end up in a more, I think, um, a, a manner that is not going to articulate effectively what it is that you want to communicate. And a lot of times the aggression is coming from a place of fear. Anger is really misplaced fear a lot of times. So when we see someone immediately go from this zero to 100, like angry, shouting, screaming match, right? It's really this underlying problem of I'm really scared of X, Y, Z. I'm really scared that you are not calling me because you are doing something else you have no quote business doing or that you're really doing something that is going to be disrespectful to me. You're doing something that's going to end up hurting me. Or that if you don't call, like with mothers even, you don't call, it scares me because I think maybe you're hurt on the side of the road, right? And then they get angry. You may get angry or something like that. And instead of just are saying, hey, I really get concerned if if I don't hear from you, if I just, if I don't get a check-in with you, this really concerns me. It, it makes me nervous, you know, from a safety perspective. But sometimes we'll get so angry and just, I just don't understand why you don't call. It's just so, you know. <laughs> you know what, though? That happens because you've been avoiding saying something in the first place. So it, now it's just built up. It's built up. It's built up. And then the other person looking like, what in the world? Like, right, like, like wait, 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 what just happened? <laughs> All I did was, right? They're like, it really wasn't that serious. But now for you, it is extremely serious because you've been pushing it beneath the surface, trying mm-hmm be liked, trying to stay agreeable, trying to not be abandoned again, possibly, or rejected. And so now it's just, you don't even recognize yourself. Now you're behaving like someone completely out of your character. Right. And I've told other times before, like when you are avoiding or even like when, when, and then it becomes to the point of conflict or aggression, when you're avoiding telling someone what it is that you are experiencing, what it is that you're feeling, how this conflict is showing up or this chaos challenge or whatever is showing up, how are you actually hurting this person? How are you hurting this person? Because a lot of times we think about too, like, well, this is how I'm feeling and it's making me upset and yada, yada, yada. But sometimes people are just not aware of what it is, how this, their actions are causing you pain or causing you disturbance, right? And so sometimes, when we're not actually addressing to them, hey, when you respond in this way, your lack of response in this way, this is how it shows up. This is how it is perceived. And it's quite possible that you may be perceived by others in this way, right? So it's, it's also being kind enough and gracious enough and compassionate enough to share with the people that we actually care enough about to say, hey, this is a conflicting emotion inside of me. And I want you to know how this feels so that one, hopefully they show up differently. You guys can work together so you show up differently, but also so it can bring some awareness to them as well. You know what I mean? A lot of times we think we're doing someone a favor or doing ourselves a favor by avoiding it, but it may be the next thing that helps catapult them into their next better version of themselves. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. And I've I've had that experience too, both professionally, but even personally. You know, Gerald and I did an interview some time ago with another couple and I was surprised that he brought it up. And I think I've shared this in P2P before that, you know, I had to let him go from (laughs) from my business (laughs) from. And for those of you who are new listening, Gerald is my husband of almost 14 years. But there was a point where I had to let him go because he came out of an environment that was kind of toxic, a toxic workplace where there was a lot of conflict avoidance. There was a lot of conflict aggression. There was a lot of silent treatment, passive aggressive behavior and all this stuff. And people just talk crazy, quite Mm -hmm. frankly. And I'm not with the talk crazy crew. Okay, like that's not my version of talk crazy. Now. One thing about it, I'm going to tell you what I need to say at this stage in my life, but I'm always going to leave you with your dignity. So I can address what's wrong without being mean and nasty. Right. He has a style and a tone that he picked up from that organization that is that was just very like, Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't direct. It was beyond direct. It was like, (laughs) hey, hey, you could put a little sugar on that. Like, (laughs) like, hold on now. This is did you meet? Did you mean to send the email that way or did you not have a chance to go back and like, you know, and so we were have we kept having conversations about it. Mm-hmm. And then it ended up being where one day I was like, 
that's not how I want to run my business. When I started my MBA program in 2019, one of the first courses that I took was actually about, you know, really defining your your mission and vision and values. Like, and I had done that before, but I knew it was time to redo it. And when yeah. I got really clear on the core values of our company, treating people with honor and respect, you would feel like it does that goes without saying, but that's not necessarily true to hold <laughs> as a value. Yeah. And so I went through that process and then it became glaringly clear that, you know, we just had different perspectives or philosophies on that. And so anyway, I told him like, no mas, like, yeah, you know, you have to cut this off. Right. But what he ended up telling me later from that experience was that was the best thing I could have done. Because I brought awareness to something that he had normalized because it was a part of his everyday. That's how he survived. Yeah. Everybody was doing it. That's how they survived. And he had normalized it and he had no idea that it wasn't necessary. Yeah. And there was one point when we were talking about it and he was like, well, I've been very successful and made millions of dollars this way. And I was like, and I've been very successful and made millions of dollars this way. Right, right. There are, yeah, we can both get to the same end result, but we get to choose who we're going to be yes. and how we're going to show up in the process. And I don't choose that. And I yes. don't want the ladies who work with me to have to experience that. Yes. And it changed everything for him. That has not necessarily been a challenge. So, you know, I have to let him back in. He's back, (laughs) y'all. It's been a couple of years, but he's back. I had to let him back in, but it was so good. And to your point, sometimes you have to just let people know that what you're saying is so true. That's that's love. Like, that's compassion. And I'm not saying that everyone deserves that, Patrice. In this instance, it was needed. And I'm so glad because when I see him now, two, three years later, I see a version of him that I don't even know if he knew was possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's so true, though, because when you bring up that point, it makes me even think when you you mentioned he had normalized how he was communicating, right? And how many of us even normalize when I say like conflict or chaos or these challenges, people have normalized what this chaos is in their life. People have normalized what conflict looks like in their life to the point where They're not even able to identify what the conflict is. So even when I say working 18 hour days can show up as conflict or chaos, it doesn't make sense to people because they're like, but this is normal. This is no, this is good work ethic. No, it could be that you are, again, trying to perform your way into the heart of others as in your boss, because you think that's a way to show that you deserve a seat at the table. That's that's your way of saying, like, I'm worthy. So let me do the 18 hours while your coworker. Tom is over here working his regular eight and you working 18. Like, girl, what you doing? Tom's doing his regular eight and you over here dead tired. Like, come on, right. let's think about this. And so why, why do you feel like you need to do this? Either do you need a seat at this table because you think you need to prove yourself to be worthy or do you need to find another table that already knows you worthy or create your own? Ooh, come like, on, Patrice. Let's talk about it. So that's, again, that's how conflict shows up. Again, people think of it in the terms of just, Oh, it's me and my boss. Oh, it's me and my partner. No, the conflict is in you. It's starting within you. Again, these performance-based complexes, these people-pleasing behaviors, a lot of times that's where the conflict is showing up in your identity because you think, I have to have this seat at the table. I have to work all of these hours. I have to do this. I have to, to be domestic in these relationships. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna ever get a partner, if I'm gonna ever get a, a ring, whatever, you know, whatever it is that you normalize in your mind that is, oh, this is normal conflict. This is normal chaos, right? Because and, and to the point where you're not even identifying it as conflict or chaos anymore. Like let's think about why. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Why are you even doing these things? What is the motivation and the intent behind these actions? Ooh, that's Um, so good. (laughs) That is so good. And you know how I feel about the person working 18 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to be a public success, yet a private failure. So Mm -hmm. that that behavior, and I'm glad, I'm, I'm so happy that you articulated it that way. Like, is it really, this is what is required? to get the job done? Or are you trying to perform, you know, for your boss, perform your way into acceptance or approval? But in addition to that, 
how does that impact your mental health? How does that impact your physical health? How does that impact your personal and professional relationships? How does that impact your environment? Like, this is why, this is why we're having this conversation on redefining wealth. You know, my thing is, how do we talk about things that impact our finances without us even realizing it's impacting our finances? And a lot of this, it also feels like for me could lead to unfulfillment. So you're chasing, 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 trying to be seen, trying to be loved, trying to, you know, earn your way into the hearts of others. There's unfulfillment there. Mm -hmm. I've noticed from clients, I've had clients that sound like what you described. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the spending was about trying to fill a void. Mm -hmm. So I have to get a bigger and bigger house. Why you never home? Right. You, you, you spend 20 hours a day at work. So right. I got to get a bigger and bigger house. I got to get a better and better car. Why? You don't go nowhere. You, right. You're always at the office, right? <laughs> like I need to have all these things or they're trying to buy their kids all this stuff to make up for the fact that they're never at home with their kids. Your kids don't want stuff. Your kids want you, right? Oh, I got to do the most elaborate vacation for my spouse because, you know, your spouse can't stand you, but they can't stand you because you're never home. You're never spending time. You're never present like all of these things. So now your finances are impacted because you're making decisions rooted in fear, not faith. Like you're making decisions that are not in accordance with what you say you want and what you say you value. And so now you just throwing money at stuff. Yeah. And it's a vicious cycle. Yes, yes. So right. You're so right, Patrice. And again, I think to your point, right, a lot of people, they'll get the finances. They'll think that's where it starts and ends. The fulfillment begins with the finances. The peace starts and ends with the finances, not realizing there's so much more things, tangible, the intangible things that goes into that, right? And I always say peace is something that is, it's an intangible feeling that shows up as tangible results. The same way that you're talking about and how P2P is with, with all of your pillars, right? Like we can have the finances, but you can, you're not going to ever be a hundred percent fulfilled unless you are speaking to those other pillars, unless you're speaking to, for me, it's it's, unless you're speaking to the prosperity and and, and being purposeful, unless you can be more understanding it, and you know, you can be more secure, you'll be more relationally fulfilled and have those reciprocated relationships. You have this united front with the community. It creates impact and, and thankfulness. Like when you have that full circle of being a quote, peace pursuit, like that's when you really can find fulfillment. Otherwise you can, you can have the money, but you won't hundred percent be fulfilled. You'll still always be chasing something, chasing a relationship, chasing the next step in the corporate ladder, whatever it is, right? And you're not going to be fulfilled until you you really get to the root of it, of that identity. Patrice, now I knew you had all this in you, but you, (laughs) girl, when you came to Purpose to Platform, is this the message that you were trying to get out into the world? You know, let me be honest. I don't know what I was trying to get out into the world. I knew... (laughs) I always knew I had something to say. I knew I had some type of business within me, but I can't say it was this, right? I knew before coming into P2P, I'd had people saying, you should do a podcast, which is you'd be great doing a podcast. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, right? Like I kind of would just brush people off. And I went into this program and let me be clear, like, I don't even think I told you this, Patrice, but I am somebody, I'm typically busy doing a lot of things and not to the point of just, over exhausting myself. But when I came into the program, right, I was very busy. I'd gotten into this new position. And so the fact that I even saw your email when you had put out the challenge, I know for a fact it was God ordained. I know for a fact, you know, so before that year started, I had already designated my word to be transformation. And then I ended up coming across a sermon where the pastor ended up talking about transformation. And he was just like, kind of, you know, saying like, you cannot transform what you're not willing to, to heal or, 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 or like some, some, something along those lines. So I'm just like, okay, like, cool, whatever. Like I'm, I'm hearing you. Right. Then I get, I'm, I'm all about planners. So then I get this plan. I order this planner. And then the first thing I open up to is the planner says, get ready for transformation this year. So I'm like, oh, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I get your email, which again, I never usually have time to even check emails in the middle of the day. And I see your email come through of join this, you know, I think it was your, your challenge that you were doing. For the yeah. Week. Created for purpose. And created for purpose. Yes. And it was to join the challenge at seven o'clock. And I think I saw it literally 10 minutes before. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna jump on to this, right? And I jumped on and I jumped on every night. I set the alarm to jump on every night to make sure I was done with calls for my day. And you, the first night um, or the last night that you were making the call, you talked about transformation. And it was like the third time hearing it. And I was just like, this can't be by happenstance, God. Like, it can't be, you know? And I was trying to convince myself, like, no, I shouldn't take on anything else. But I knew then I was like, no, this is is something. It's a reason. And you even said, you said, you have to ask yourself, if God brought you to this, there has to be a reason why he wanted you to to be a part of this challenge, right? And I thought, okay, maybe, you know, it is something bigger with the the podcast I'm doing or, or something, I had no idea it was going to be such a life changing experience that I had with P2P. Um, and, you know, I like to cry. So I'm sitting here trying to <laughs> fight. <find, find myself. laughs> but I cannot I, I cannot tell people enough about P2P and the experience of Purpose the Platform. I went in there thinking like I had ideas for my business, but not how I wanted to put everything together. I've always been kind of business minded, but could not figure out how to put all the pieces strategically together. And the way you have organized this program, it is so succinct. It is so engulfed with love from people that is something I've never experienced in my entire life. I've been in other programs or people that tried to put me on the programs. And I was like, "Uh uh-uh, this ain't it. Like, this ain't right. You can feel the difference with the community. And I think it's something that taught me, you know, with the people that you attract, the people that you're called to serve Patrice, like a lot of us are like go-getter, ambitious women. And so we're used to doing things ourselves. We're used to relying on ourselves for a lot. And it's not, you know, we we delegate things here and there, but really it's like, okay, but I can do this myself. You know what I mean? Like that is what we default to to the point where I think it is sometimes to the detriment of us because we absolutely have the support and people want to help us and support us, but it's just kind of like, yeah, but we can do it ourselves. It's okay. It's not a big deal. We can, we want to be superwoman, but this program really showed us how to rely on community and have women that love and support us and want to see us succeed. And, Mm -hmm. and it's just, and it, I think for me, it transpired outside of that as well even down to most recent this week, I, you know? So, I mean, I've seen it even in my personal life of how, Patrice, you don't need to do this all yourself. People want to help you and you're not an, inc- it's not an inconvenience because you, mm-hmm. you show up for everybody else too. Like you pour into people, you, you water people and people want to water you back and it's okay. And, and you made that okay. And you made it normal. I cannot thank you enough. It's, it's such a great experience. Beyond business. That's what I tell people. It's business transformation, but it's life transformation. That's it. It and is. you are one of the people, you said when you came in, you were busy. And I remember even you were on a Q&A call and you were like, I have to focus on my niece and my family <laughs> and like, yeah. don't be looking for me. Essentially, it was like, I'm not really going to be in here. <laughs> Tell the people what you did this past summer, how you went from state to state to state. And, and every state, I see you hooking Girl. up with a P2P sister. I'm like, how many yes. P2P sisters have you met in person at this point? A lot. Oh my God. It was such an amazing. Yes, you are right. I did. I did all those things. Came in like, I don't know how much I got this because I got to meet, you know, I got to show up about, you know, everybody. Right. But you're right. I went on this, what I call my live like a local tour. Um, and I, I use that as a way to identify if I was going to relocate somewhere else. But along that way, right. I would kind of post in the group. Hey, ladies. Hey, sis. Um, I'm going to be in Charlotte. I'm going to be in Atlanta. And I ended up going to Houston. And um, I had the opportunity to meet up with, I think, close to 10 different, I want to say it was close to 10 P2P sisters. I and think was- you've met more P2P sisters than me at this point. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the group. I'm in our alumni group getting jealous. Like, oh, okay, so everybody's brunching and, and right. lunching and hanging out and taking walks and well, like, but that's totally. what I love. The community is not just online. And imagine <laughs> like you came into P2P in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah. But imagine what this is about to be as we continue to welcome 
more P2P sisters. And what I love too is a lot of the women who I see doing things together, collaborating, podcasts, all this stuff, they're not even from the same cohort. It's like past cohorts, like, hey, yeah. sis, come on in. They were so excited when your group graduated. They were like ready to welcome yeah. y'all. And, and the <laughs> way that it just, it's literally everything that I dreamed of. You guys, you guys are the manifestation of like seriously dreams and prayers answered. Yeah, Patrice, we, I honestly, like, thank you for your obedience because you, like, when we were leaving, I know, like, a group of us, a lot of us were, like, thinking, like, we kind of want to just stay within our own, but, like, we formed this tight-knit family, right, but then we get thrown into the alumni group, and it's still, it's an, literally an overflow of what we already were experiencing. It's more women that are exactly like us, where they're just, it's an overflow of love, an overflow of support, people that want to jump in, and to your point, right, I've connected with other women that were not a part of the, the program that I was in. They were in the alumni group and I talked to them regularly. We, I've had people on my podcast from the alumni group already. So it's it's amazing. It's something that you built that cannot be duplicated. I don't, you know, and it, we hope it would be right. Like in some ways it can't be duplicated from the, you know what I mean? From the, of what you do, but you would hope the love and support can be duplicated in some ways, right? Like that becomes normalized instead of competing in, in the jealousy, yeah. things like that. It's such a beautiful thing that you created, like, honestly. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to have had you in it. I think you're my third Patrice. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I've never met so many Patrices in my life now. Oh. Uh, I, I had a couple in your cohort. I'm just so proud of you. I'm so thankful that you said yes to not just coming in the P2P, but then you had to say another yes, because P2P can be a lot. There's a lot of going on. There's a lot of pushing and a yeah. lot of stretching and a lot of pulling folks out of their comfort zone. And at each stage, you could have logged off, tuned out, <laughs> said no. You could have been like, I, you legitimately were busy, right? So, well, I'm busy and I'm not going to be able to do it, but you continue to show up for yourself, but also for your sisters and just be like such a leader in, in that particular group as well. And so I'm so excited for what God is going to continue to do in your life. The podcast, tell me what else is going on. So the podcast is out. What's it called? Yeah, I have a podcast called The Oasis Space. And so that's out. I have season one out. We'll be back with season two for the fall. So I'm excited about that. I already have some good guests lined up, some great topics. So right now, I would definitely encourage listeners to get caught up on season one until we roll out season two. But yeah, it's a lot of really good topics that we discuss, some heavy topics too. And then I have my coaching program, Unleash the Peace. They can reach out to me at hello at patricegrimes.com. I love that. Unleash the Peace. Unleash the Peace. Yes, I love it. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, girl. Okay, before I let you go, let me ask you these rapid wisdom questions. Okay. You know how we do. All right. How do you define success? I define success by finding the freedom to show up as your best self without being attached to finances. Ooh, that is so good. I like that. Yeah. Okay, how do you define wealth in three words or less? Peace, health, and family. Love it. Yeah. What's one book that has helped you redefine wealth for yourself? Boundaries. And I I think it's by like D.L. Townsend or something like that. But that one was a big one for me. Because I think, again, we talk about wealth. It's not just finances. It's, it's, it's a lot of things that go into how you can get wealthy how you can obtain finances. And I think for me, a lot of it related to just setting those healthy boundaries in place. That one for me is a, a good one, boundaries. Love it. Okay, fill in the blank. My name is, and for me, the truth about wealth is. My name is Patrice Grimes. And the truth about wealth is that you will never experience true wealth until you experience true peace, which is being able to pivot even as chaos ensues. Yes. Come on, girl. <laughs> That's my girl right here. Oh, my gosh. 
Yes. I believe that. Patrice. Oh my gosh. I believe that. I identify with that so much. Thank you so much for being here. I adore you. Having me, Patrice. I appreciate it. Okay, how much did you get out of this episode? I know this is one of those conversations you're going to need to listen to again. Everything from just understanding the conflict avoidance and conflict aggression, I can't tell you how much I know this has come up in my life, but, you know, Patrice really reframed peace for me in a lot of ways. Um, And I can't be the only person who at one time in my life would make my issues more insignificant than others. I definitely have been there with performing my way into the hearts of others. It's a part of how I became addicted to achievement. And I, you know, have shared that here on the podcast many, many times. Um, But this was so good to just understand that conflict truly begins within. And as long as we avoid having those uncomfortable conversations, sometimes conversations that really are rooted in compassion for the other person. As we talked about, man, there's just so much on the other side of that. So much. I love when Patrice talked about, you know, there's no peace when there's misalignment between mind and heart. Oh, so good. There was just too many nuggets. There was too many nuggets. Listen, Patrice is a Purpose to Platform alumni, as you heard. She's a Command the Stage alumni. I love how she told her story here. And she is a purpose chaser in our free Redefining Wealth Facebook community. Come and show her some love. Come and tell her what you got out of this episode. Tag her and let her know that she was a blessing today. And also, Patrice started with me. You know, she had been listening to the podcast for some years But our journey together really started when she said yes to coming to the challenge. And we are almost at the end of the current challenge, which is called Committed to the Call. And I don't care if you're just now finding out about it. Join me tonight, live, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, Get the replay. Listen to the challenge as much as you can. The replay won't be up forever. So come on over Get into the challenge, get these nuggets, and no matter what, I know that it's going to shift something in your life. If you, like Patrice, felt like this was your year for transformation, then I really do invite you to come check us out and get a little closer and see what we're all about. Your life could be barely recognizable three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. I guarantee you, you won't recognize the woman in the mirror if you come hang out with us and do the work. So... Come on over patricewashington.com forward slash challenge, patricewashington.com forward slash challenge. You can also drop into the free Facebook community. Come on over. Just look for Redefining Wealth with Patrice Washington in your search bar on Facebook. And that's it for me today. This has been such a rich conversation. Mm -mm -mm. I love it. I love having these conversations, especially with women that I really adore and I'm so proud of sincerely. All right, until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.